Hi there. In this second video in the advanced series, I'm going to show you how to work with masks to do selective edits. I've known a lot of people who have been good with Photoshop, but they have no idea of this extremely powerful feature. It's perhaps the most powerful feature in Photoshop that I know of. So let me share you this wonderful knowledge with you. What do I mean when I say a selective edit? Well, there are many times in your photos where you have parts of them that you want to do a certain edit to, but you don't want to edit the whole picture. And that's where you do a selective edit. You edit only part of the picture. Many, many cases where this is helpful. How do you do that? Well, somehow you have to select part of the image that you want to edit. Somehow. And there are many ways that are better or worse. And there is one way that is much, much superior to all of them that I know. Let me show you by example. I brought in a f picture of this flower. It's okay. It's nothing special. Dandelion. I look at the histogram. It's not taking up the whole dynamic range. So I'm going to do an auto contrast. Image adjustments auto contrast. Okay. It's looking better already. Problem is that... I don't like the background. It's too bright. I want it darker. I want it to be a darker green. So naturally I have to select the background and then I can edit it to make it darker. Well there's many tools to select things in Photoshop. You have these rectangle or circle selection tools. You have the magic wand selection tool and you have these lasso tools normal, polygon, or magnetic. And they work. But they don't work good. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Even with a lasso tool, if you go and do every little crevice, it's going to take you a lot of time and it still won't look that good. You'll actually be able to see where the edits was, was done. Let me show you for example. I'm going to select the flower using the lasso tool, normal lasso tool. I could use the magnetic tool, but with this picture it's even harder because the flower edge is, is actually blurry, and so the magnetic tool wouldn't work that good. But let me just show you a rough selection. So here I go, I select the flower. Again, I'm just doing a rough selection. Okay, there, good enough. Now I selected the flower, but I want to edit the background. So somehow I have to select the background. Well, that's easy. I go to select inverse, and now the opposite was selected. Okay, well, let me just make it darker. I'll do a curves, image, adjustments, curves. I'm going to pull down the midtones to make it darker. Sure, right about there. I click OK to accept it. I'm going to deselect everything, so I go to select, deselect, and now it should be obvious that an edit was done to this picture. It's obvious. There's this line all the way around the dandelion flower. Not good. Let me zoom in. Look at this. This is so obvious. It's an all or nothing effect. Awful, awful, awful. I mean, this is unacceptable. That could never pass for a good photo. You could have done a feather to that selection, but it still would have been pretty pathetic. And that's where the mask tool comes in. It's a much better way of selecting things. So let me go back to where I did the auto contrast. So I click my history back to the auto contrast state. Okay. Now I have to do a mask. Well, there's a quick mask mode. It allows you to make masks. It's down here. It's called click quick mask mode. If you have a newer version of Photoshop, both of these buttons is combined into one. It's a toggle button. But in my version, I have, I have two. One for standard mode and one for quick mask mode. Let me click quick mask mode to go in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to paint a mask using the paintbrush tool. So I click the paintbrush tool. I paint in black. That's how you do it. And now the critical step, the most important part, is the brush style. So I right click to bring up the brush palette. And for a seamless edit, it has to be one of these soft 
brushes. It has to be a tapered brush. It can't be these hard all or nothing brushes. It has to be soft. I've selected a soft 333 pixel brush and what I whatever I paint will become a mask so that when I go back into normal mode it will not be edited. Well I want to mask out the flower so I'm gonna select the flower to make a mask. And I just click and I paint my mask. Now notice how my foreground color is black but I'm painting in red. Well that's just how this works. There's an option in the options to change the color red to whatever you want but I stick with red. Okay let me go back into normal mode. So I click back here to go into standard mode and now it has selected the background. But what you can't see is that the selection is actually tapered. It's hard 100% here and it tapers off to nothing. So it's not an all or nothing selection, it's a tapered selection and that's because I used the soft paintbrush. Well let me do the same thing, I'm going to do a curve, so image, adjustments, curves, pull down the midtones, right about there looks good. Okay, let me select this, so I click OK. Let me do select, deselect, to deselect everything, and now look. If I just showed you this picture, you could not tell an edit was done to it. There's no way of telling, look. You can't tell. It is a seamless, seamless edit. Think of the power you have now. You can do seamless edits to any part of your image to make it look better. This is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I can't get over it. It's amazing. Uh, let's see. Let me just show you what it originally started like. Very dull. Not even a good picture. And then with two little edits it brought it to look like this. I mean, it's not a decent picture right now. It's okay. It's, it's nothing special, but it's at least better. Selective edits allow you to save bad pictures. And even good pictures, it allows you to make them better. It's phenomenal. I'll probably be making more parts to this video to show you more advanced features, but there you go. There's the basics. That's how you do a selective edit by using the masks feature in Photoshop. Phenomenal. I hope this was helpful.